Good morning, fellow privateers. Welcome to the week ahead outlook after a long weekend of uh, celebrating the Independence Day in the U.S. I was away from the screens kind of Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, so I missed all the action on uh, all the NFP induced action on Friday. Yeah, pretty strong number. It looks like they revised up their numbers as well. Meanwhile, in Canada, the data, the jobs data out of Canada was a bit uh, was a bit weaker than expected. So, you know, we will take a look at all the uh, and go through the all the currencies, a few of the equity indices. We got new highs in the U.S. equity markets last week. And, um, you know, that was kind of expected. We figured we'd get up to somewhere around 3,000 before a pause. Um, still just raising stops on our long equity <clears throat> position. Um, there's also some stuff that came out over the weekend. Former IMF boss Christine Lagarde has been nominated to follow... Mario Draghi as the next ECB president. Um, we'll have to watch how this plays out, but it, uh, I would think that she, you know, coming from the IMF, I would think that she'd put some pressure on some of the European countries like a Germany to um, start increasing the fiscal spending because they basically have been pulling on a string now for a, a long time with you know, zero interest rates, negative interest rates. It's not really helping growth at all. So I think the next step there would be would be fiscal stimulus. Um, so, we'll, you know, we'll see. I, you know, she's she's been nominated. She has to get, they have to vote. I would imagine she's, uh, she's plenty capable for this job. Um, but I do think that, you know, she would be, pretty dovish sounding, um, or a pretty dovish ECB president. Um, <clears throat> so what else do we have? Well, we had Turkey, the Sackler Central Banker. Um, dollar Turkey, I think, was up about, I don't know, it's up 2% now. I think it was up about 3 or 4% on the open. Um, so that's something that... Uh, They'll be paying attention to the next next few days, see how that plays out. Uh, I did read something, I believe it was on Forex Live. Um, it's coming out of the Hong Kong newspaper, the South China Morning Post. Um, despite Trump and Xi G being friends, there is no deal on the horizon. So we're not seeing much of a reaction in the in, in the things like you know Cross Yen, Aussie, Kiwi, um, pretty much unchanged from where we closed out on uh, on Friday. So nothing really there. Last week, if we want to see what the the, the movers and shakers of last week, um, we always had some outsized moves on Friday after the. Uh, the stronger than expected U.S. NFP. Uh, the euro was down 1.2% on the week. Dollar yen was up a half. Cable was down 1.3%. Dollar Swiss was up 1.6%. Aussie was down just over a half percent. Dollar CAD pretty much unchanged. Kiwi down 1.3%. S&P finished strong, up 1.6% on the week. Uh, gold was down a little bit. Um, just under a percent, and WTI crude was down 1.6 percent. So, um, you know, definitely had some moves. A lot, a lot of those moves were on Friday, and we'll go through the. Um, we will go through each one of them. I'm just going through some research right now. I'm looking at the City Economic Surprise Indices, and. Let's see where we are in the U.S. Minus 58. Europe is minus 10. Uh, yeah, nothing, nothing really all 
that traumatic. There, there weren't like massive, <clears throat> massive moves. Um, so let's go through the currencies. Here's here's the Aussie chart. That was our trade of the week last week. Uh, you know we were selling it on the 70 handle. Got up to 70.47 on Thursday. I think that was a high. And then, you know, we got a bit lucky. We, we went down to this 15 and 30 day EMA. And, uh, you know, it was a pretty pretty ugly bar on Friday. And that was mainly the bond move, which we'll take a look at in a, in a minute. Your dollar had the big down day here on July 1st. And then we had another big, some indecisive inside type days. And then obviously Friday, it shit the bed on the... The NFP number cable hanging around 125 um, hasn't really traded yet, but it got down to 124.80 on Friday. So we did take out this little fractal 125.10, which was a that's a pretty important low. You know, I would imagine it was a uh, holiday-induced, uh, extremely thin market on Friday, <clears throat> half day in equities, that sort of thing. Got to really clean up these charts. I will. I should have done this before, but apologize. There's a lot of lines, a lot of fibos. There's Kiwi. Every one of these dollar pairs looks the same. Dollar CAD actually had the initial move up, got up to 131.36 on Friday, and then closed back at 130.80 ish. Um, that was with the weaker than expected CAD number. CAD jobs number. Here's Dollar Swiss, which I haven't updated in a while, so I can do this. Let's take a look, actually. Let's, do, let's run a fib here. Take it from this high, that important high, 102 handle, down to 96, 90 area. So we closed above the third, we closed above the 15 day, the 30 day. You know, that's looking pretty bullish. Um, my guess is we get a test of this 200 day and this half fib um, before this little dollar rally peters out. Uh, dollar yen, we've broken up through the 30 day as well. It looks like it's got some more top so There's a fractal here at 108.80. This is kind of a big area. Didn't like it up there, so we'll see how it reacts. It's not not too far. Uh, dollar China back up to right around 890. Um, you know, a little double top on the dailies. This 890 level was support and resistance. So let's watch. You know, I think I saw something from Trump about saying that China is still trying to devalue their currency. They're not too happy. Um, sorry, I'm just looking at the uh, a couple of these. Let's take a look at Dollar Turkey. See what that did. Trading view is not going to. I don't think it's reflected everything. I believe the high was closer to 580. Um, you know, so maybe up somewhere around here. Probably wasn't up there long, but it was during the twilight zone. I'm doing the video. Um, yeah, about 30 minutes after the <coughs> CME reopened. So Aussie yen, nothing really going on there. Euro Aussie, nothing going on there. Let's take a look at Euro yen, not much. Um, what about the VIX? That was an interesting day for the VIX. Massive daily range. And an outside uh, bullish engulfing, closed above Thursday's high. Gold hanging around. You know we did sell off most of last week, and uh, now we got these two fractals here. This is really important. This 1437 and 1439, very important up here. And then as support, we've got three daily lows and a fractal at 1382. So let's uh, let's watch that. I would play a break of either side. <clears throat> let's go over to some of the other uh, 
some of the other markets, the S and P. Here's the S and P cash. Sold off pretty aggressively. Obviously, that the big, the better than expected jobs number of the U.S. You had a decent sell-off. I think it was about a two and a half standard deviation move in tens and thirties. So higher yields, lower bonds, and but you can see here it looked like the, the dip buyers came in pretty aggressively somewhere right around this 2968. Um, futures I think got just above 3000, maybe 3006 in the S&P. Let's take a look here. Here's a future. What was that high? Two daily highs, Thursday and Friday, 3006. Pretty much right there. So be playing a break of either side of that range. Here's another old fib. Got rid of that, clean that chart up. NASDAQ, similar looking bar, daily bar. You know, it sold off initially on the on the uh, strong NFP, pairing back any sort of chance of a 50 basis point cut at the end of the month for the Fed. Um, you know, they were they really they really got a hold of the uh, you know, here's the here's the ten year yield, US ten year yield. That's a that was a bullish engulfing, closed right on the fifteen day. We've been positioned short bonds um, looking for higher yields. And this high here, which is also a fractal, I'm gonna call that two oh seven. That's kind of our break trade. I think we originally had it in around two ten, but we are we are trading this. The positioning, the sentiment is all still pretty heavy, you know, looking for lower yields. And uh, we think this could be a big surprise, especially after the, the good data out of the U.S. Uh, what else do we have? That's the 10 year. Here, let's take a look at the 10 year future. Same type of deal. Bearish engulfing. Um, here's the 30 year. Future, massive bearish engulfing. There's the yield. Big bullish engulfing. Let's see what's going on in WTI. Not much. Not much at all. Looks rangy. It's called 50, 56 ish on the downside and 60 on the top side. Not touching it in between. Gold we looked at. There it is again. Silver. Not much going on there. Copper hasn't done anything since I last looked at it. So that pretty much wraps it up. Um, you'll hear from us on the on the European Open, and we do have some data coming out. Let me just check my see what we got in the week ahead. the The big thing, I guess, is the Fed minutes. Uh, we got the Bank of Canada this week. We got UK GDP, inflation data out of the U.S. and the European Union, and then we've got Powell, um, you know, meeting twice with the um, congressional testimony this week. So all that could be pretty interesting. Um, what else do we have? What do we got? Germans, we got some German data, industrial production. Uh, but I think the you know the big the big thing are these uh, Fed Chair Powell's testimonies to Congress, and we'll we'll be watching that closely. We also have uh, RBA's Guy DeBell speaking. I think that's Thursday. Yeah, that's Thursday Australia time. Uh, that's when the U.S. inflation data comes out. Also have the minutes from the ECB meeting on Thursday. And then Friday we got Chinese trade data. And that's about it. So you know, enough to we'll be we'll be paying the closest attention to these Powell testimonies. I think that's the that's the hot spot. We're looking for a trade of the week. We'll get one out. Um we've got a couple ideas need to uh communicate with my colleagues over the pond and I uh, wish you all the best in the week ahead. Cheers.